How's it going everybody? It's Pilot Fame and we are back with another preseason FPL video and today we're continuing our team watch series and up next is championship winners Fulham. We're going to take a look at their attacking FPL assets as well as what they have going on defensively as well as what they're doing in the transfer market to help strengthen now that they've been promoted back to the Premier League. If you haven't done so already, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe channel if you are new. Or haven't done so already it greatly helps out the channel as well as turn those notification bells on so you can get the content as soon as it is readily available drop us a follow over on twitter so you can keep up to date with any and all fpl news as well as give us a follow over on twitch so you can see when we go live for our preview deadline and impromptu fpl streams which will all be over on twitch for this fpl season and those will be starting back up the week of game week one we'll be doing a preview and deadline stream as per usual so, without further ado, let's look at Fulham's defensive assets that I have targeted for this FPL season. So here are some of the key defensive assets in FPL for Fulham, newly promoted and winners of the championship in the 2021-22 season. The player stats over my shoulder are from the 2021-22 championship season for the players, whereas the stats above me for their team stats are from the 2020-21 season when they were last in the Premier League to get you a bit of an idea of what they did last time attacking wise so you can get a little bit of a different scope on it defensively though i think fulham are going to come under the same scrutiny as i mentioned for bournemouth and will probably be the same for nottingham forest in previous seasons gone by we would have looked at some you know kind of promotion teams and see if we can get some budget fpl assets unfortunately fpl have priced some of the players in the top six teams even the likes of arsenal at the same price as some of these guys here robinson and tosin at our bio 4.5 million i mean you're just gonna pick tommy asu or ben white right unless fulham absolutely you know go go on and do mad things in the premier league which is definitely possible there's always a chance for that but i just don't see it happening personally Adarabio or Tosin as he's named in FPL 41 starts last season a bit of a goal threat uh, every now and again he is a big figure in the box and can be quite imposing and will potentially get a set piece goal or two uh, every now and again. Robinson will be one playing uh, as one of the fullbacks. I think he mainly plays on the right-hand side, if I remember correctly. Two goals, four assists in the championship with 33 starts. Again, I think he's just going to be probably just not picked personally, even though I think he is a very good player, a good deliverer of the ball, likes to get up and down, and will cause problems for teams that allow him the time and space. Very much a, a, a young, modern fullback uh, in the way that they're being molded into nowadays, where they're basically playing as right-sided attackers almost. Uh, how, like the old school 4-4-2, they're playing more as like the the left and right midfielders nowadays, or they're playing as central midfielders, playing as like attacking midfielders, like the way Cancelo plays for Man City. Rodak is going to be the probably mainstay in goal. I would think he was last season, 33 starts. I think he had a bit of an injury, which is why he didn't start as many games. Um, so I think that he will be the one, if you're going to go for the Fulham goalkeeper, would be the one to, to go for there. Unfortunately, though, Fulham's fixtures, much like all three promotional teams, they don't have the greatest fixtures to start. Liverpool at home is probably one of the worst fixtures you can have off the start. Wolves away is never easy of a destination, even though it is an FDR rating of two. Brentford at home, that should be an interesting one. And then Arsenal away is going to be tricky as well. So defensively, I just think there are much better options. Same with what we mentioned with Everton, with Bournemouth. There are just better defensive options from teams that placed in the top six last season, like Arsenal, like Spurs, like Chelsea, like Man City, like Liverpool. You can just basically build a team from those players. And I think defensively, that's where a lot of these guys are not going to get seen any play in most FPL teams. So probably want to pass up on, unfortunately, for Fulham. But there might be some attacking assets that could help influence our FPL seasons. 
So if you take a look at the team stats just above me from the 2020-21 FPL season, that's when Fulham were last in the Premier League. Only one season out, uh, they were relegated in 2020-2021, and then won the championship the season after. Again, the player stats are from the championship season, 21-22, and the team stats above me are from the 2020-21 Premier League season. And Fulham have some very good attacking assets, to be honest, for their price points. However, they're going to need to improve on their XG the last time they were up in the Premier League. Just under 41 XG on penalty just isn't going to cut it. They need to have more clear-cut opportunities. Mitrovic under Scott Parker when they were in the Premier League was kind of phased in and out of the team. Didn't really have a consistent run of games. But under Marco Silva, formerly Everton manager you would have seen that he is somebody who relies on Mitrovic quite heavily, actually. He is an absolute monster in the championship. 43 goals. That's not a typo. That is the correct number. 43 goals. I had to double-take myself. And seven assists, playing constantly through the middle, getting penalties, 6.5 million. Again, if the fixtures were much nicer, I think a lot of managers would have Mitrovic in their team off the jump. And would go for that cheaper kind of forward. Unfortunately, again, for all the promotional teams, I think Forest have the worst of it, uh, or at least tied with Bournemouth from what I remember. Fulham isn't as bad. They have two winnable fixtures in game week two and three, you would think, but still going to be difficult. Mitrovic would be in a lot of FPL teams. They're going to typically play a 4-3-3 or a 4-2-3-1 in most cases, and that's kind of important because... Cabano and Wilson are going to play as those wide players in either the, the left or right in the front three. Cabano being on the left, Wilson on the right. Or uh, they're going to be playing on the left and right in a 4-2-3-1. Harry Wilson can also play as the number 10 if they wanted to implement him there as well. 10 goals, 19 assists. He was very, very influential in Fulham's season, often playing in the front three or in the front four in the 4-2-3-1, providing for Mitrovic and helping him score a lot of goals. And if you see their number of starts, they're going to be your most two reliable players, 40 starts and 44 starts respectively, with a possible 46 starts because that's how many games they play in the championship across a whole season. I like them personally. The only thing is, though, if you look at Wilson as an example at 6 million, you have Martinelli from Arsenal who potentially could be on penalties and playing game in, game out for Arsenal. That seems like potentially a little bit of an oversight when it came to pricing. I just think they've reduced the price of a lot of players for some of the bigger teams, and we're just going to not see a lot of play from these cheaper teams from the pro like promotional uh, teams, the cheaper assets from the promotional teams. So I think that it could be unfortunate because I like to see more diversity in the number of players that you can pick from. I think Wilson and Mitrovic, if they replicate even the slightest bit of form that they did in the championship, they could provide some FPL points that could be much needed for this season when we're looking for differential players. Because it seems like there's a fairly strong template forming on FPL social media as well as in the FPL community. And we're going to need to look at these kinds of players to break that mold. And when Fulham gets some better fixtures, we might be looking at them uh, to do that. And I think that Mitrovic and Wilson are going to be, out of all the players from the championship, are probably the most promising uh, for attacking returns. So that's going to do it for Fulham's attacking assets. Let's see what they're doing in the transfer market to help strengthen their squad for the upcoming FPL season. Now, Fulham have done some pretty astute business in the transfer market. We'll start with the ins. They brought in Paulinho because of the leaving uh, Seri. He was constantly playing as more like a, in the, the double pivot as a more of a defensive minded kind of break up the play midfielder, potentially playing as a box to box from time to time. And Paulinho is coming from Sporting Lisbon for approximately 17 million pounds. Again, these transfer fees are approximations. And he will play as more of a holding midfielder. Not going to be much of an FPL asset, but will allow the likes of newly brought in Andres Pereira from Manchester United, who was priced at £4.5 million before he made his move to Fulham for just under £10 million. He's probably going to play the number 10 role. And the reason that is the case is because Carvalho, who was the number 10 for the majority of last season, has made his move to Liverpool and will play as more of a squad player for them. 
But now Pereira, who's 4.5 million in FPL, could be playing number 10 game in, game out for Fulham. And is probably going to be most of our bench fillers for the start of the season, at least to see. Because, I mean, they're not going to sign him for nothing. And they need that hole. And Pereira can play in that role. And that's what he did for when he played for United, for when he was playing at his best. Very attacking. He's also going to be on set pieces as well. Direct free kicks, indirect free kicks, potentially some corners. We'll have to wait and see if the extent of that is going to be that drastic. But I think he's going to be in most FPL teams alongside uh, Josh De Silva from Brentford. These two 4.5 million guys are going to be playing number 10 for their team, most likely game in, game out. Another potential in as well is Burnt Leno, someone who could potentially take the role from Rodak and could be the starting goalkeeper. Would definitely improve on their position. Uh, Leno is a very good shot stopper, just not the greatest with the ball at his feet. But I think Fulham more than likely are going to be, you know, backs against the wall type thing more times than having a lot of possession. And could look to play on the counter. In terms of the outs, we mentioned uh, Carvalho. And Gisa and Seri are often players who played in that double pivot in the 4-2-3-1 or in a midfield 3. They're going to be a little bit of a loss, I would say, in that midfield because they were so influential. And Gisa, I believe, went on loan and now the sale has gone through. I think he went to Serie A. And Paulinho is going to have to come in and replace that. And I think him alongside uh, Tom Kearney, who's a long-standing Fulham player, they're going to probably hold down that kind of double pivot uh, for the majority of the season. They'll have Andres Pereira in front. They'll have Cabano and Wilson playing on the flanks. And they'll have Mitrovic through the middle. That's how I can see them setting up under Marco Silva. But let me know what you think down in the comments below. Where do Fulham need to help strengthen in the transfer market? Do they have all their positions covered already? Or do they need a little bit more depth? if they have hopes of staying up in the Premier League for another season. Welcome to the Fantasy Football Scout members area, the one place that you need to be tuned into for the upcoming FPL season. It has a wide variety of resources and tools that will help improve your FPL game today. It has a bunch of different members-only articles written by some of the best FPL managers across the globe, heat maps for all the players and positions, as well as player comparison tools, which will help you see side by side who is going to be more effective for your FPL team, fully customizable stats tables powered by OptiStats, and much, much more. Use the link down in the description below so that you can get access to the Fantasy Football Scout members area today. It'll help improve your FPL game. This video has been sponsored by Manscaped, the best in male below the waist grooming. Make sure to check out manscaped.com so you can see the latest and greatest updates to their lawnmower as well as their performance package and much, much more for all their gadgets and gizmos to help keep your family jewels looking as shiny as ever. Make sure to use the code FLAME20 so that you can get 20% off your next Manscaped order as well as free worldwide shipping. Go check out manscaped.com today. And that's going to do it for this edition of Team Watch for Fulham. If you haven't done so already, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe channel if you are new, as well as turn those notification bells on so that you can get the content as soon as it is readily available. Also, drop us a follow over on Twitter so that you can keep up to date with any and all FPL news, from price changes to injury news, transfer news, and anything in between. We'll be in full flow during the FPL season, as well as give us a follow over on Twitch so that you can join us live for our preview and deadline and any impromptu FPL streams we will be doing those exclusively over on Twitch this season as well as check out the link in the description below we have our Flames Recruit League back up and running if you were in it last season it should auto renew but we do have the link down in the description below as well as the league code if you just want to enter that over in my Twitter bio and lastly, make sure to check out Fantasy Football Scout. All the stats that you saw in today's video were part and from the Fantasy Football Scout members area. It will help elevate your FPL game. Thank you all for watching, and until the next one, take care.